In the last video, I threw the large 18 pound platter and allowed it to get leather hard. Okay, when I last left the platter, I had it upright on my bat. I let it sit for several hours until it became leather hard, and then I placed a big towel over it for probably a couple more days. Um, when it got to the leather hard point where I felt like uh, it could uh, withstand the pressure of being on its rim, I then sand sandwiched it. It was sitting on the bat, okay? The pot is here, and then I sandwiched it with, um, this is, it, it would be a bat if a bat fit, but it, a bat wouldn't fit. This is the uh, Giffen Grip extension that I alluded to in the last video. This is a great um, uh, addition to the Giffen Grip to make it a little bit more functional for very large pieces. You can see it has slots there. I'm going to take the edge off of this. I, I keep it stored with this foam on the edge. It just protects it. I uh, forgot to take it off for the video here. There we go. This is what it normally looks like. Um, and uh, I'm going to be trimming it on this. Now I'm just going to flip this. Now note I can kind of hold this by the bottom. Um, I really don't like to hold these by the rim because I don't want to uh, warp it or anything. And it is perfectly leather hard. It's really nice. So this is what the extender looks like. The extender Oh, jumbo platter extender is what they call it. It has these uh, three brass extensions, which will fit over here. Okay, now I want to bring it over to the wheel, but I first of all want to show you this is the platter extender. Um, it's on there right now, but I want to take it off so I can show you how it goes on. So I unscrew it just like I would a, a normal gift and grip. You can see that the sliders have this very long bar on them. They are an extension. And then I've already mentioned that the base of this actually has the three little brass um, kind of extenders down there. So when you put the three brass extenders in the slots, um, I do find it easy if I just slide one of them in and I rotate it until the other two drop in. Um, and then I'm going to start my <clears throat> sliders. And remember that your, your give and grip has to be aligned so it's open to the large uh, slot in the base of it, which I knew mine already was because I just removed these. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to hold the base of the kitchen grip, and I'm going to rotate it clockwise a little bit until they engage. So you can see those were going in. And I'm going to very carefully flip this without warping it. There we go. Okay. One disadvantage with a kick wheel is how close this is here for me. Um, but, I mean, that's a small price to pay. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. If you're sitting at a wheel with a stool, though, that you can adjust, that might be a little less uh, tight for you. Okay, so there we go. I have it snugged on there. Now, for um, trimming this piece, as I had mentioned, we're going to be trimming it with a double foot ring. The purpose of a double foot ring is it adds a little bit of support in the middle part. Okay, so I'm going to do, say, foot ring here and a foot ring here. And I'll go ahead and show the inside of those. Okay, now the, the biggest trick tip that I want to remind you of whenever you're drying a platter like this. You want to make sure that you're using slow, even drying. If you allow it to sit in a draft, you can maybe have one edge of the platter where it's a little bit drier than the other edge. So when you cut your foot, when you trim your foot, it will then be uneven because if part of your foot is drier and part is softer, the tool is going to go down lower in the soft parts. So you want to make sure that you have it nice and even. Uh, mine has been stored with a towel over it and under plastic for probably at least four days. Now remember the rule of thumb is when you do a foot, you go down from the top, don't go in from the outside. Because if you noticed, my outside wasn't exactly even there, 
but if I can go down from the top, I can make that even. And I am getting debris thrown everywhere. Now, I am just frugal enough that I clean my floor before I trim something like this. And uh, sometimes I lay down towels or not. And I try to catch all my trimmings, or most of my trimmings, um, as long as I don't have any contaminants in the trimmings, I will recycle them. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn my wheel on and I'm gonna get this going here. I do apologize for the loudness of my wheel. I think it just comes with age on these. Now, the edge out here is much thicker than the interior. The interior is just going to be a nice um, thin-ish kind of foot, thick enough that I can still glaze in the center, but not so, not so thick that we're going to have difficulties with it drying. I didn't mention it, but you can see that this is coming off in perfect ribbons. It's exactly the moisture that you want it to be when you're trimming. It's not going to warp and change shape. It holds its form. And it's, again, still attached in ribbons. It's not coming off in dust at all. So I'm going to switch tools here from a regular loop tool I'm going to use. I don't even know what this is called. I believe it's a Japanese sort of a tool. The reason that I'm going to this is now I'm going to focus on creating an undercut okay, on this because I want to create this platter so it can actually hang on a hook on a wall for display when it's not in use. You can do the undercut with another sort of tool, like a, a ribbon tool, but I find that these um, are a little bit easier. There are some that are a little bit more pointy. This one is kind of like a, a rounded point, I guess. Now there's a trick that you can use with tapping to hear the sound of the clay. And it certainly comes with practice, but I can tap it and hear it. Okay, I'm liking the depth of that undercut. I think that's pretty, pretty good for an undercut now. I think it's going to stay up on a, a little hook just nicely. I'll clean this up a little bit. So now that I have it trimmed, <clears throat> kind of the moment of truth is to check it just to see how thick it might feel. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of slide this over here. feels really good. That's about the thickness that I need it to be. So I'll just tighten this back up, do a little bit of tidying, and I should be uh, good. Okay, to tidy this I'm just going to do some compression.
Okay. Now I have it trimmed. I'm going to pick it up, try to knock the debris out from in the foot, which there is a fair amount of debris. Temporarily stuck. It's not like permanently stuck or anything. It'll all come out. There's one other thing that I wanted to show you that's kind of cool to um, use if you want to, and that is if you would ever like to create a, um, a, a hole, let's see, I'm going to find the best angle area. I'm going to do right here. If you would like to create a hole for a wire, I'm going to just use like a little drill bit. This is a salt and pepper drill. I could use a slightly larger one, a little driver here. Okay, so here I'm just going to create a hole so I can put a wire through. I could even do double if I wanted to do two places for the wire to go like in and out and in and out. And then I could create a little, a little loop. So that's a nice little... Um, an extra added thing if you wanted to uh, have another way to hang a plate. You could do the little holes like that. Okay. <clears throat> and now that I'm done with that, I'm going to take it. Let me pull this back here. <clears throat> I'm going to take it, carefully flip it, and put it back on my bat. Let it dry very slowly, and again, my preferred method is I'm going to throw a towel over it so I know it will dry, but it's going to dry slowly. And that's trimming a big 18-pound platter. Mm -hmm.